It's really hard to believe. 182 days, 26 Sundays, a lot has happened since March 15th. You may have had a lot of questions. You may have had moments of anxiety or doubt. You may have had to cancel a trip or miss an opportunity. You may have lost a job. You may have even lost someone you love. I'm not going to lie. It's been a really hard season. I can't help but think of how our church has been impacted over the last 26 Sundays. And by our church, I don't mean giving or attendance or numbers. I mean the people. I think of Corey and April Sexton, who have already lost two children to cancer in a car accident. Corey contracted COVID-19 and was in the fight of his life to survive. It was a roller coaster battle until finally Corey prayed and asked God to watch over his family. And that night he told the Lord, if it's your will to take me, then so be it. He was just so tired. The next day he was able to open his eyes and tell his wife he loved her over FaceTime. I think of Tony and Angie Rogers. Tony has run point on Hope for Christmas for many years at Westridge Church. His wife and his rock, Angie, was hospitalized with COVID-19 for several days. Slowly but surely, this lady with an incredible servant's heart is getting back to full strength. I think of Tanya Monroy, who's a single mom and a nurse. She actually contracted COVID and had to be separated from her three-year-old for over three weeks. She's on the front lines battling fear and battling disease while still taking care of what is most precious to her. And then there's Marty and Angie Collins. They're the owners of two jewelry stores that had to be shut down during this pandemic. Today, they've been able to open one of those again, leaning into prayer and trusting God with great faith that he will move them forward. Oh, and I can't help but think of the black brothers and sisters in our church and community who on top of a global pandemic have dealt with trauma, insensitive comments hurled at them. You know, we recognize that all men and women are created in the image of God, and His love is freely given to black, brown, white, and everyone in between. We have been through it, every single one of us. But here's what I know to be true. Our God is still sovereign. Our God is still love. Every word he ever spoke is still true, and in Jesus, all his promises are still yes and amen, including his promise to build his church and the gates of hell would not prevail. While our doors have been physically closed, the church has been alive and on the move. In this season, we have loved our community well. We provided food for those in need. We provided aid for the education of refugee children in our own backyard. We renovated homes. We provided transportation. We contacted over 15,000 families in our community to say, how are you doing? And how can we pray for you? In groups we've gathered together. In our homes we have worshiped together. We have wept, we have laughed, and we have prayed. The church is alive and well. We're not merely a building, we are a people. People whose foundation is on Christ alone. And He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds our future. We were never closed, and we will not be silent. Fully devoted and all together, we are back.